Hi everyone. In this section, we are going to talk about the plugins and middleware ecosystem in Webpack 4. So there are a lot of advanced things we are going to cover in this particular section. So this section is very important. First of all, we will talk about how we can enhance our build by putting tree shaking, code splitting in all these concepts. Then we will talk about different kind of loaders which can load the styles, which can load the SAS, which can load a less files. Then we will talk about these different plugins which are mini CSS extract plugin or extract text plugin. Then we will talk about the middleware systems and plugin system in Webpack. So there are different middleware available which are like Hot Module Reloader, Hot Module Replacement Plugin, Webpack Dev Middleware. All these is a middleware ecosystem which we will talk about and we will also talk about the tools which we can use to analyze the bundle size, to analyze the dependency graph, to analyze the dependencies which are coupled and bind in the single bundle file. So let's get started. In the first video, we will talk about how we can create advanced build for Angular 6 application using Webpack 4. So we, when I say advanced build, means we are trying to introduce some optimization aspect. Not specifically optimization, but which are actually needed for any webpack build which are like tree shaking, code splitting and providing a way of lazy loading the bundles. So first of all tree shaking. So tree shaking is just a feature which detect the dead code or unused modules and it will not include that in the final bundle of your application. So what we will be do, doing for that is Aglify.js is just a plugin which will eliminate the dead code from our code so dead code example is like this so we have a two functions in a single file but in another file we are just importing dry functions so that means the fly function is a dead code for my application because i'm not going to use this anywhere that's where this uglify js plugin comes into the picture after resaking the another thing is a code split so code splitting is one of the most compelling feature of webpack what it is doing it is actually creating the multiple entry point and multiple output point for your application. It's not production optimized if you just create a one single build. Always try to have a multiple entry point like for Angular 6 application, I can have main bundle dot main dot ts as an entry point or polyfill dot ts as an entry point. So there are two entry points, there will be two bundle, one will be main bundle, another will be vendor bundle or I can use some other way to create a CSS bundle in a separate file using the extract text plugin. I can create the style bundle in a separate file. So Webpack is opt optimized for smaller build and smaller files. So last and final, we can also optimize the Webpack build by distributing the modules into the multiple chunks. That is possible if we provide a lazy loading structure to angular 6 application so angular 6 uh, has a router and in that router you can just provide that whenever the lazy load routes is getting hit then only load this particular module otherwise no so this module will be created in a separate chunk it will not be a part of main module and this will get loaded whenever you are actually loading the that particular route so let's see this particular uh, example in our code and then we will see how that is actually working so in our code, which is whatever we have done till now, I'm just added the uglify.js plugin here. So uglify.js plugin will play that role, which will be removing the dead code from our application. Other than that, what we already doing, we already taking care of the splitting part because we are using these two entry points. One is polyfill, one is a main.ts. So we already getting two different bundles and we already using this extract text plugin to extract out the styles into the different bundle. So when we do the build, we will get these all splitted output, all splitted bundles in our application. Now coming to the lazy route or lazy loading in Angular 6 application because that is the feature of Angular which is providing and Webpack is supporting it. So both of them is satisfying our needs. You can see we got all different bundles, one style bundle, one polyfill, one main.ts bundle. Now 
For understanding the lazy loading, you should already have some basic understanding of Angular routing, which works. I mean, this is just a boilerplate code, which I already pushed on the GitHub repository. So this is my routing module. Just look at this particular code, forget about everything. Here, whenever you are hitting the lazy loading routing, it is going to load an independent lazy loading module. So this is how you can split out this particular module from the main bundle. And you can also see the separate chunk has been generated for this because I have already labeled the lazy loading. Now, once you run the applications and hit the lazy loading route, then only this particular zero chunk will get loaded that we can see. So let me first run this application. So it is running the application using webpack dev start. So there is a webpack dev server already running. So here I got the final output. Uh, it is up and running. I can see that in the webpack in the browser. Here you can see. Let's try to analyze this example and let's try to see what all different things are happening here. Let's clear the cache. So I got it here. I wanted to show you how actually lazy loading working. So when you click on home, different routes, it are, these are working. When you click on lazy load and click on network tab, you can see this zero dot chunk dot js is getting loaded. So this is actually the example of lazy load because this module is not a part of main route and whenever you are hitting that route then only I am loading this piece of code. 